August 18th, 2010. 30 years old Ben McDaniel walked towards the end of the jetty, putting on his diving gear and jumped into the water. Then he slowly began to descend to a depth of 58 feet until he reached one of the most famous signs in the world. And this sign strictly warns everyone about the danger and urges you not to swim forward unless you are a very experienced diver and know 100% what you're doing. Otherwise, you will die, just like other people who ignored this sign. Welcome to the channel of interesting documentaries, where today I will tell you about the tragic Vortex Spring accident. If you want more similar content, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And now, enjoy watching. Ben was born on April 15, 1980. He was the eldest of three children. Ben had been interested and active at the same time in dangerous activities since his childhood, such as climbing steep cliffs. At the age of 15, Ben became interested in diving, but after graduating from university, he turned to the construction business and opened his own company. In 2008, while visiting his parents in Memphis, Ben found his younger brother Paul lying unconscious on the floor. Ben tried to revive his brother, but his efforts were futile. An autopsy determined he died of an overdose. This was very shocking to Ben and his whole family. It was a very difficult time for Ben. He blamed himself and fell into depression, which affected his business and personal relationships. After a while, he divorced his wife and lost his business. He was left with huge debts. So Ben decided to live in his parents' house in Florida. He became interested in diving again. It was a kind of escape for him from all the problems. One of Ben's most popular dive sites was the Vortex Spring, which attracted divers from all over the United States. Vortex Spring was an entertainment complex with a diving school. The main source of entertainment is the cave itself. Ben loved this place and did many dives. So he was quite well known around here and everyone from this diving school knew him. Ben even wanted to become a diving instructor himself and work at this school. When August 18th came, he made the first dive of that day. Other divers claimed to have seen Ben next to the gate. He looked at them as if something was planned. They later saw Ben packing up his scuba gear and said Ben had spent the entire afternoon alone. At 7.30 p.m., he dived for the last time. Ben swam past this sign, continuing to swim for about 300 feet. He finally reached the iconic Death Gate, which is locked all the time. And the only people who have the keys to these gates are very experienced divers who work at the Vortex Spring Diving School. But even these divers do not swim there, because it's extremely dangerous. Ben was a fairly experienced diver, and he was desperate to get to the other side of the gate. So when he came to them, he tried to dislodge them, until finally he tried to slip through the fairly wide gaps in the gate. Another diver saw all this and began to worry that Ben might get stuck in the gate itself. So he decided to unlock that gate for him himself. After the diver unlocks the gate, Ben looks at him and thanks him. And alone, he swims in to probably one of the most dangerous caves in the world. A 1,600-foot-long corridor leads from this gate and descends to a depth of 115 feet. Most of this cave has been mapped, but there are sections that are not explored. These are places that are so narrow that you have to take off your diving gear and push forward to get into them and this is extremely dangerous. It's not known exactly what Ben was doing after crossing this gate, but Ben never showed up again. A few days later, employees seeking his truck became alarmed, and they called the police services to look for him. The services explored a large part of the cave, but there were places where they decided not to swim because of the great danger. The only evidence the divers found were two tanks filled with fresh air not the standard gas mixture required for diving under these conditions. The discovery of these tanks raised the suspicion that something was wrong here, because the tanks were not only filled with the wrong mixture, but they were also found right next to the entrance of the cave, 
Experienced divers know that spare tanks should be placed near the areas being explored to make it easier to reach in case of an emergency. There were rumors that Ben might have been killed. Even more, these rumors began to spread after the following year. The owner of the Vortex Spring Complex, Lowell Kelly, died under very similar circumstances. Another theory claims that Ben staged his disappearance in order to start a new life without the many personal and financial problems he had at the time. The third theory of what could have happened to him states that it was caused by an accident during which he drowned, and his body is still lying somewhere in the deep part of the cave, where it is very difficult to access. In 2012, the cave claimed another victim. According to the people who found the body, the people were motivated by the huge sums of money promised by Ben's parents in return for the body being found. The drowned man searched for Ben's body in the cave, but unsuccessfully. After this news, the parents canceled this reward to prevent more people from getting hurt. What do you think? Can Ben be alive? Thank you for watching and see you in the next video of the interesting documentary.